Uh, welcome to the after show show. The after party. It's time for the after party. Me and Sarah are here for the after party. <laughs> so can you, ex can you explain a little behind the scenes? Yes. What was in the mug? It was tequila. It was <laughs> straight tequila? <laughs> well, I, we mm. did do a splash of margarita mix. Yes. But as you know, I don't do sugar. So right. it was a very slight All splash. Right. Light splash. Mostly tequila. This is why you gotta go with the Moscow Mule. Then you get the little, and, and uh, you get the sugar-free ginger beer. Uh, you know, you got the delicious vodka inside. I didn't stuff. plan on it. I got here, mm. I crammed some chicken tacos down mm -hmm. my face because I got here late because I had to take care of the kids. Mm -hmm. And um, and then I was like, I, saw, I walked past the kitchen and I went, I smell tequila. Mm. Yes. And it was there, it was waiting a, for me. Am I done? Uh, you're done unless you'd like to make a quick appearance here on the YouTube you truth. I, right here. I would love We're you to. Can you come right on the side? Come on the side. Uh, yeah, kind of come so maybe here. I, you know, get a little uh, Steve Dates. Delano, if you'd love to pop, I'd love on. to have you pop in. Uh, Delano is uh, getting a snack. Uh, <laughs> it was a long night. It was a long night. Let's see if we can kind of go back and forth here. Um, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, we've got a, you know, a bunch of people who are hanging out. Steve Days is here. Delano Suarez is here. I mean, I thought it was a pretty, look, we talked a lot about it, obviously spent an hour, but it was a good night. I mean, I think that that felt like a, an actual serious country having a serious debate about issues. I think that what you just said is, it was actually serious. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I, I mean, I, I understand, you know, I, I, I love Rush to Death. One area where I disagree with him is he used to really resent being called an entertainer. Mm. I'm fine with it. You know, I, I understand that this is infotainment. Mm -hmm. I, I understand if, if we don't have a compelling presentation, people don't watch. Mm -hmm. they're, not, they're not, as much as we would like to believe they're tuned in for our brain power <laughs> or, and, and our good looks, that's mm -hmm. not it. Mm -hmm. it. It has to be a show. Mm -hmm. And so I don't mind showmanship. I, I embrace that, but it can't just be a show. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've got three kids. One of them just got married, all right? I've got another one who just graduated from high school and a third one who just got his first car. Mm. All right, I love the show as much as anybody. Guys, the, we, have the, we have the worst used car market since 2007. Mm. It's the most expensive ever to buy a new car. Mm. It's, we have the most expensive housing market ever. Mm. Can, we, can we maybe have a serious conversation yeah. about the future? And we actually got to do that tonight. And, and you know what? I was glad to see that for a couple of hours. It was refreshing, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Delano, what, what, what do you think overall? I mean, are, are you, are, where are you in the optimism scale of the future of our country? Well, I mean, my, my faith keeps me optimistic, yeah. hopeful, hopeful. Okay, I like that. Um, and part of it is that I, I don't put too much on our politicians. And I, and I think one of the biggest problems in our political culture is that government doesn't know its place. Mm. And, and I know mm. this is not going to be a debate question, but it would be nice to hear some candidate at some point say, you know what, as president, I would have a job to do. But the job that you do in your house is even more important than what I do in the White House. Yeah. Um, but we, we don't think like that. And I think over the past couple of decades, government has continued to grow and grow and grow in size. And all of the other intervening institutions from the family to the church to civic organizations have gotten smaller and smaller and smaller and weaker. So it's like Barry Bonds, you know, 2005. Really, really top heavy. <laughs> <laughs> Grew a and, third and, head. Right, right. Yes. On, on some spindly legs. So, yes. Um, so, it, but to C's point, I think it was a good policy debate. Um, and, and it was, particularly at the end, hearing both uh, DeSantis and, and earlier on Ramaswamy talk about being husbands and fathers mm -hmm. was really important. And obviously, mm -hmm. other candidates have children, and obviously, you know, Trump has children. But when you have young kids. Yeah. It's just, it just raises the stakes on all of these policy debates. When you have kids that are actually in in public school, K through 12, um, the, the education stuff goes from being theory and talking points to, to like real, real substance. Yeah, we're in one of those towns where they've had a bunch of those big uh, debates when it comes to uh, school boards. Mm -hmm. And uh, Sarah, I know you've been super involved in this. By the way, guys, done an awesome job tonight. You do not have to hang out any longer than you want to. Love to have you as long as you want, but feel free to, 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 to bail whenever well, you need so to. I'll hang out for a few more minutes, okay. and then my wife's going to give me the hook. Okay, that's fine. Uh, uh, Sarah, give me something. And the ed education part was a big part of the conversation. And, uh, you know, look, you've, you've been fighting really hard in Texas for this. It's been a big part of the Texas scene. I mean, mm -hmm. politics has been based around education a lot. What, what did you think of that part of it? Well, um, I, I think that... I am very hyper-aware and hypersensitive right now to... Um, I
earlier all of the COVID stuff that the left is clearly trying to bring back. Mm. Um, for Turn to the mask. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I heard from, my, I mean, I, I send my kids to a very, very tiny little uh, Christian private school that I heavily vetted um, before they started going there. And even there at parent orientation, the new headmaster was talking about, are the lights going out on us? Okay. What so the? we're in the dark now. <laughs> Sir, can we get those back on? There are ghosts in here, and now they're going to come out. I do not want to have anything to do with ghosts, please. Um, I'm just going to keep talking. Yeah, keep going for so, it. So, um, but the headmaster was giving her parent orientation, and she mentioned COVID and started saying, well, there are a couple cases right now, but we hope that we don't have to implement any more COVID policies, COVID oh. protocols. And oh, I'm thank like, you. oh, no, 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 no. Like we're not, we're not going back to that. I'm not, I, my kids never wore a mask. They're never going to wear a mask. Are you really telling me that I am going to live in 2023 where you are going to force me to make the decision whether or not I'm gonna have to pull my kids Incredible. Because they're not, like, I'm not having that. In 2023. Yes, in 2023. And so I, I guess I just, um, I'm very much uh, on the train right now because I see all of this happening. I see conveniently, right before another presidential uh, election, the left is going all in on COVID. Mm -hmm. On I'm sure they'll push for mail-in ballots and all of these other things that they pushed for previously. But um, I, I don't know. I, I, I want retribution for that. And mm -hmm. I wish that that would have been <laughs> a little bit more, yeah, a little yeah. bit more of, of the focus was like, let's not lose sight. I, I realize that there are so many things going on right now uh, that it's hard to keep track, but I don't want to lose sight of how bad it was yeah. during COVID Incredibly important. and yeah. and how many missteps there were. And I mean, I, I think I know someone who's sitting with us right now who wrote a freaking book, book about it. Yeah, right about that um, exact topic. So I, I just, language. <laughs> yeah, like I, I want to talk about it and I don't like that nobody seemed to mention it, even though you see it creeping up from mainstream media and from the left, they're clearly trying to make it a thing again. Mm. Um, I, you know, first, first of all, love that you're all here. Thank you so much. Click the like button, you know, do the share thing, do follow the page. We really appreciate it. Um, I want to get Steve out of here before his wife kills him. Um, and uh, wait, can I say bye? Yes, yeah, Sarah, Sarah, go. Sarah, I have, Sarah's gone. I, as I said, I have young children. I got to go. Yeah, Love you there guys. You go. Bye. Thank Love you so you much guys. for joining us, Sarah. See Follow you. Sarah Thanks, on YouTube as well. Please do that. Um, Steve and Delana, why don't you give me a final uh, comments here, kind of wrap up. What did you guys think? I think that um, the contrast, now I've not had a chance to watch Tucker and Trump tonight, right. mm. but my wife did and my daughter did, and I've, and I've read several summaries. The contrast, and, and I know it had like 70 million views in an hour, but the amount of Americans that use Twitter at all, let alone as a political conduit, is really small. Mm -hmm. And, um, and the, the contrast between essentially Tucker just, you know, emceed Trump's greatest hits concert. Yeah. And, and wow. what we had on this debate was a discussion of the future. And I think that contrast is very, very stark. And the reality is, if this is about we have to have a retribution over 2020 and mm -hmm. that election will win, if it's about what's best for our kids and the Trump future, will win? Trump will win. The prime I'm talking. Okay, about. okay. Mm -hmm. And if it's a and, and and if it's about what's best for our kids and the future, Desantis will. And about a, about a month ago, I reunited with an old friend of mine, Richard Vigory, who's one of the founding fathers of the conservative movement. Mm -hmm. He basically invented direct mail fundraising at the yeah. dawn of the conservative movement with Phyllis Schlafly and William Buckley in that group. Mm -hmm. And and he's a, he's a really great guy. And he asked me when him and I were hanging out, and he said, Steve, do you know what the deciding issue of every election was? Since 1960, that's the first election I ever was I ever worked in. Mm -hmm. I, and I was thinking probably likability because the TV area, you know, he goes, nope, the future. Mm. He said, go through every election cycle, whichever side better articulated the future won that election. Huge and so I did that. I went from 1960, I went from JFK, you know, to, to, to make America great again mm. versus cackling Hillary. And you know what? He was right. Whichever side had the more compelling vision for the future won. Even, hey, I, I spent five years in the Hanoi Hilton. I'm the guy that gives you your chance to purge yourself of the national sin of slavery and move into a brave new world. Brock, that's 2008. Mm -hmm. Whoever has the boldest vision for the future wins. And I don't believe we're going to win a, a general election that we have to win, frankly, mm -hmm. on re-litigating re 2020. Agreed. At this point, I don't believe Trump is capable of doing anything else. I'm not even sure his base or audience wants to do anything else. Mm -hmm. And so I think DeSantis has by far the stronger message for a general. I think his challenge will be winning the primary with that message. 
And right now we have a large base of people that want to pursue something that a larger base of Americans have no interest in at all. They want the election to be about them, not about us and the candidates. They want it to be about them and, the, and their futures. And I think that's gonna be a great challenge to figure out. What I would be fascinated to see, and even if it included Vivek using, combining with Trump to gang up on DeSantis, I think that'd be instructive to actually see that, actually, mm -hmm. to just see Vivek essentially say, hey, I'm a Trump surrogate, all right? But what would be fascinating is if we had a three-person debate where two guys have shown they are willing and eager and capable to talk eloquently about the future mm. versus Trump who wants to talk about himself in the past. Yeah. And put that before 30 to 40 million Republican primary voters, and says, even if we just did it one time, and say, listen, this is the choice, okay? And understand, your heart might be with going into the past, mm -hmm. but your head needs to go home tonight and look at those kids you're tucking in mm -hmm. and understand that all the feels that you're getting right now for, for getting pissed off and mad about the past, in 2025 and 2026 and 2027, when they're appointing Clarence Thomas as successor to the Supreme Court, when you go from not being able to afford a new house to your house, when you go from not being able to afford a new car to your car, understand during those years, and now you start looking at, and Trump is gone, he's 80, 82, 83 years old, he's mm -hmm. off the national stage, and, and so the guy in the man bun took, got on his motorcycle and rode off into the sunset, <laughs> and you're left at home with a kid, okay? Right. And you're looking at that kid in the future and understand all the stuff that gave you the feels in the, in the summer and fall of 2023 aren't gonna mean jack flipping poop those, those next four years. And I think we should that should be put to the primary voters once and for all to make that decision. Yeah, make a decision. Uh, yeah. Present both sides. Yeah. Um, all right, yeah. Steve, you can head out if you want. Uh, right. Delano as well. Uh, you, you, you got a couple minutes to wrap up here? Or no, I mean, S Steve hit all <laughs> all of the points. And, and But but I think the biggest thing, and I mentioned this earlier, political system cannot be about one man, regardless of who yeah. it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? So, so all of us... Okay. Can and I'm sure everyone does agree that we do not want to see, you know, the DOJ, the FBI, mm -hmm. and and you know those institutions weaponized for political purposes against the past president. Mm -hmm. We're all in agreement there. But at the end of the day, as Steve said, 2024 cannot be about relitigating 2020 um, because uh, the, our generational wealth is our children, right? And and if we are not able to to articulate a vision for the future. Because anybody who has kids, you're, you're raising your grandchildren's parents right now. If you don't keep your eyes downrange saying, okay, this is where we want to be by, 20, by 2042 or 2044, we're not going to get there by going back to 2020 or 2017 or mm -hmm. 2016 um, or 1984. I mean, so, so th this, this election has to, be about, has to be more than about one person. As much as you may love him, as much as you may say he, he's being mistreated, we can all be in agreement there, but at the end of the day, um, if 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 Trump is able to say they mistreated me, I'm going for retribution in 2024. How is that going to affect you know your life and the life of your children and your children's children, and and you know your posterity to come? So, voters have a choice, and ultimately, this, that's the beauty of our system. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, the voters will choose, regardless of what we say or what we think they should do. The choice is in their hands. All right, guys, thanks so much. That was oh, awesome. You got it, Thank you so Thank much. You very I really much. appreciate it. You yes. bet. Thank oh, that's you. That's great. Yeah. I, was gonna, I was basically trying to peer pressure these guys and hanging around. <laughs> it worked. It, it totally worked. They worked. Yes. Thanks, guys. You guys are awesome. Thank you. Um, thank you so much. I'm going to hang around here for a little bit and uh, and chat with you about um, some of your questions. I know you got a bunch that have been popping up. I will try to get to as many as possible as they're kind of going by. They're going by kind of fast. I'm sorry if I missed your comment or I missed your uh, question. Um, if you want to drop in, you know, do they have the super chat thing stays on my screen for a while. If you want to drop in whatever the cheapest one is, I, I probably I'll, I'll try to get to every one of those. Um, so you can do that as well. A um, uh, couple questions coming in here. Uh, uh, I love Dace da and Delano. Uh, yeah, they did a great job tonight. I mean, really did an awesome job breaking all this stuff down. It was a really good group tonight. I thought we had a great conversation. A falling debate, and I'll tell you, I I, you know, I didn't watch the Fox's coverage, so I don't know what they said, but I I, I got to believe this coverage was superior. Um, I, I was plenty of people I like at Fox, um, but, but I will say, uh, you know, this is different coverage you're getting here, and we do really, really uh, ask for your support if you can do it at blazetv.com/stew. They got a code debate for twenty five bucks off. If you're here, 
it's free, which is freaking awesome. Um, and if you're here, I know there's what, 1,300 people watching right now. Thanks so much for doing that. Take a second and click like. That'll help us uh, spread the, the coverage around. Uh, we do appreciate that and follow the show. We do a show called Stu Does America. It's here five days a week. Um, so make sure to uh, check that out. Okay, um, let's see what we got. Um, some DeSantis support here I'm seeing. So thank you for the added time. We love it out here. Thank you. It was great. Vivek is a WEF graduate. Yep, there was, I mean, he's tried to address that. It's something that the primary voters aren't, aren't going to like. It's going to be interesting. One of the things I thought going into this, and we had firsthand experience with this, long before there was... Uh, a field for Republicans. Back when Vivek Ramaswamy was talking about his book, he had a book called Woke Inc. And he came on the show a lot of times. And he's a good speaker. He's a smart guy. Uh, he has a lot of bold ideas. I mean, the word bold is the word I would talk about when I talk about his candidacy. Now, there is legitimate criticism, I think, sometimes of Vivek in that uh, he very well sometimes might overreach and say, hey, I'm going to do X, Y, and Z on day one. And look, if he gets in office, a lot of that stuff's going to get blocked by courts. And he, you know, But the bottom line is he's presenting a bold vision. You know, Asa Hutchinson isn't doing that. Um, and, uh, you know, I saw him in Iowa as well. He owned that room in Iowa. He was, he was you know, probably the most crowd-friendly candidate there. I actually thought he would do a little better tonight. But the bottom line is he was in almost a no-lose situation. He came in with very little name recognition. Most people hadn't seen him. And I, I, I think I saw a couple of comments going by. He feel, he feels safe, um, or excuse me, a fake. He feels fake, and I think he does at times feel fake. Uh, but it is one of those things where um, I, I think he's going from zero to sixty here. He's not he's not one of the front runners, even though his polling and some of those online polls have showed up pretty well. He's got a lot of room to grow, and I think that helps. So we got a super chat here. We'll take this one here real quick. What we got here. For those of us who didn't see Trump tonight, did anything happen in Tucker's interview? It's a two-times Trump voter. I'm just over him. Uh, that is The Real Hayden. Thank you so much for, uh, was it The Real Hayden? I don't know. I kind of went by a little bit quick. Um, I think, I didn't, now, of course, I was watching the debate. I did not see the Trump thing. I'm going to be watching it as I prep for the morning show tomorrow. Tomorrow we will, by the way, be reenacting much of the debate with puppets, and you should definitely tune in for that. It's going to be completely ridiculous. I can't tell you how many freaking puppets we now have in the studio, so check uh, that out if, you, if you'd like to. Um, the Trump interview, from what I've heard, was you know Trump getting his voice out there for a couple of hours, a long interview, um, and from what I've read about it, it seemed like it was a, uh, an opportunity for Trump to speak his mind. It wasn't an interview where Tucker was pushing him into uncomfortable areas all that much. Um, but, you know, look, this is counter-programming here. Um, and I think the pre-recording thing is a little bit weak. You know, Steve brought up on the, on the coverage, and I thought it was a very good point, which maybe his, his attorneys may be advising him, look, just don't do this. Don't go out on stage. Please don't make our lives a living hell by saying something in the middle of an unscripted debate that winds up hurting the legal case. Trump is in the fight for his life when it comes to these legal uh, cases going after him. And I will say, like, he should be uh, very giving with his money right now when it comes to these other uh, co-defendants and co-conspirators in these cases. This is the time to spend your cash. If you got billions of dollars, this is the time to spend it. If Rudy Giuliani's kids want to go to Disneyland or his grandkids, I guess, now's the time. Like freaking pick them up in a Bentley every day on the way to work. Make them feel very comfortable and very protected. And I don't know why he's not doing that. I don't I re don't really understand it. But um, look, the indictments will help him in this primary. An, an actual trip to prison, I don't know that that will happen, and I really am skeptical of what this does when it comes to the general. But, he, you know, look, Trump has fought through a lot of stuff before, so we'll see. I know we've got more. I don't know how to see all the Super Chats. I'm doing my best on the Super Chats, guys, so let's see. How do I do it? There's one. What, uh, what will we do different in the general no matter the candidate? Um, you know, let's take it out of policy because policy is something that is – you don't want someone bailing on policy stuff. You don't want someone who's going to just, oh, I want to please the voters, so therefore I'm going to change my ideas. That's a terrible idea. Um, one thing that I think is a really simple case, and I mentioned it a little earlier, I've talked to you know, lots of moms and you know, people across the country on this stuff. 
one of the things that they say about Joe Biden, and you know this, you watch it all the time, it's the reason why independents are weird with Biden. It's the, it's, it's the reason that independents are, and even Democrats are skeptical of a Biden run. The problem here is he's so old and incoherent and he's falling asleep all the time on the job, that's a real hampering now to his candidacy. Now, Donald Trump is basically as old as Joe Biden. His energy is totally different. I don't think people see him as an old candidate. He doesn't feel like an old candidate. His energy is really good. But seeing the side-by-side -side of a person in his 40s who has a real grasp of, of, of policy or a person in his 30s, even with Vivek, even some of the, you know, the mid-range, you know, the Haley's and Scott's, who I don't think really helped themselves tonight, there is a real, real black and white difference um, between that package, when you're talking about a 30, 40, even 50 year old compared to an 80 year old, that's something that like speaks to something that even people in the middle and on the left have real problems with when it comes to uh, Biden. And I think, you know, that is something that Trump may be, be able to overcome, but it is such a gimme advantage for Republicans when you're going up a guy who, then against a guy who's completely incoherent. And maybe it just comes in the form of a vice president. I don't know. We'll see when it comes to that. All right, I'm going to try. I'm trying to get all these here. Let's see. What do we got? Uh, okay. Um, I was surprised at the lack of DeSantis Ramaswamy back and forth. It seemed like, uh, this is Zachary. It seemed like uh, Ramaswamy argued with everyone but DeSantis. That was interesting because I thought that was going to be the whole Ramaswamy game plan. Go after DeSantis the whole time. Some of the best exchanges, I will say, 